replicate this in the University of Alabama. So I told him that he needs to recruit minimum five students so we can have a club at the University of Alabama. And he has recruited ten students. So this only happened from Friday and today is Sunday. So that's two and a half days. So this is what happens when we take association of sadhus who travel around and we give Krishna to other, each other. So thank you very much for coming. We'll have Maharaj take it on from here. Somebody here plays harmonium? Call up under? And we have about 50 redundant players. <laughs> Somebody with the Divine Grace. Easy.
Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada Ki speaking in a Hare Krishna temple? Yes. It's a secret, but you can't tell anybody. <laughs> when you're speaking in a Hare Krishna temple or a Hare Krishna program, look around while you're singing Jayarada Madhava and see how many people don't know the words. And that tells you how many new people there are. But as far as I can see, you're all veterans. You've, you've been around umpteen years for chanting Hare Krishna and <coughs> visiting the temple. Anybody here that's new? Really new? Really? Did you know the words? Jai Radha I did not. Didn't know? Okay. Do you need an introduction to <coughs> Prahlad Maharaj or you're okay? Little introduction would be good, right? At the end of the Arti ceremony, this nice devotee very enthusiastically sang the Shringa prayers. Right? And the Shringa Dev is a, a form of Vishnu who appeared to protect his devotee Prahlad. So Prahlad was the son of a big terrorist, a universal terrorist, wasn't just somewhere in the Middle East. He was a really bad person. But Prahlad was just the opposite. He was pure and simple and very devoted to Lord Vishnu. Hirani Kashibu had a brother, a younger brother. His name was Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha and Hirani Kashibu, they were sons of Diti, Kashapa and Diti. It's a detail. The younger brother was killed. The younger brother, Hiranyaksha, was both really powerful. He was really busy taking gold from anywhere he could get gold on planet Earth and take that gold to the place where his older brother was ruling. And Prabhupada said he built a subway <laughs> through the center of the Earth all the way to the other side of the Earth from India, somewhere in Brazil to take gold. And it's, it became so disturbed in the balance of the weight of the earth, the earth fell out of orbit into the bottom of the Garbadak Ocean. Garbadak? Garbadak Shangishnu? The bottom half of this universe is where Garbadak Shangishnu resides on the Garbadak Ocean, and the earth fell into the ocean. And the demigods, ah, Vishnu, please help. So Vishnu came and rescued earth. And there was a big tussle between Yaksha and Lord Vishnu in the form of Lord Raha, and he finished him. Finished. So the elder brother, Hiranyakashipu, considered Vishnu his enemy. He killed my brother, I'm going to kill him. He's my enemy. And that was Pilat's father. And Pilat was a devotee of Vishnu. And his father considered Vishnu his enemy. It's kind of oil and water, it didn't mix so well. So Lord Vishnu came to protect Pilat.
this section of Srimad Bhagavatam is, is very famous and very wonderful and I want to point out something. This is a black and white <coughs> sketch of a painting that was commissioned by the king of Puri, actually the king of Orissa, including Puri, named Pratakarudra Maharaj, and that's him at the bottom, <coughs> paying obeisances. <coughs> and those of, shh, those of you who have been to Jagannath Puri, you may be recognized where this painting was made. This is it. Narendra Sarovar. How do we know that? See those waves? That's the Sarovar. And over here, this black and white checkered marble tile that's around the perimeter of Narendra Sarovar. It's a really nice place. And <coughs> the painting shows the king. The Prakashara Pandit, one of Lord Chaitanya's disciples, had a disciple who was a very expert artist, so he was commissioned by the king to make this painting. <laughs> and in the center, there's Gadadhar Pandit reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. And I know who's who because there's a Bengali version, they put the names under everybody. So we know who's who. Right behind him, or kind of to his left, that's Lord Chaitanya. To his right, or to our left, that's Lord Nityananda. Behind him is Advaita Acharya, and with a little beard over there, that's Srivas. And down directly behind Kadadhar Pandit is Jagatananda Pandit and Sarup Damadar. And over here, Across from him is Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya and Jagatananda Pandit. And standing up here, hanging up his cloth, that's Haridas, although he looked a little chubby. I think mean, Haridas was thinner. And <coughs> one of the reasons for showing this, besides its nice painting, uh, is. If you're the king, close your eyes and imagine you're, you're the king of Orissa during the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and you wanted a painting in which Lord Chaitanya was pick, depicted along with his associates, it would be a kirtan scene, right? Well, this is a Bhagavatam recitation scene, which means, by inference, it's something the devotees would do from time to time. They would come together and they would hear Srimad Bhagavatam together. And the reciter of Srimad Bhagavatam, in this case, is Gadadhar Pandit. And if you read carefully in Chaitanya Bhagavat, you'll find it's something that Lord Chaitanya did every day. <coughs> he would rise early in the morning go to the Jagannath temple, attend the Upala Bhog ceremony, chant and dance in ecstasy. The Pujaris would give him prasad of Lord Jagannath and other articles that were offered to the deity of Jagannath. And off he would go to visit his dear devotee, Haridas Thakur. And he'd give the prasad of Lord Jagannath to Haridas. And they would discuss topics of Krishna for some time, every day. And the very next place he went, every day, as he went to the Tota Gopina temple. Tota means garden, and Gopinath is the name of the deity that Gadadhar Pandit worshipped under the direction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's wonderful story of how the deity was found and Gadadhar Pandit had two main practices that he did every day. He worshipped the deity. He took a vow that for the rest of his life he would stay in Puri and worship the deity of Gopinath. So Lord Chaitanya would come and see Gopinath. 
imagine Krishna himself in the mood of Radharani coming to worship the Lord of the Gopis, Gopinath, in Jagannath Puri, in front of Gopinath. One can only imagine, he's pretty ecstatic. And his dancing and chanting. And then he would sit and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. Now, <clears throat> some of you in our audience are ladies. And ladies, you'll be happy to know that one of Lord Chaitanya's associates, Ganga Mata Goswamini, was the guru. She gave initiation to the king. She came three generations after Lord Chaitanya, and the person, one of her expertises, was reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, which she learned from Haridas Pandit, who was the second generation disciple of Gadadhar Pandit. And the reason I'm saying that is, Gadadhar Pandit was really good at reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. So now imagine Gadadhar Pandit, who is non different than Radharani, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none different than Krishna in the mood of Radharani. What was that like? Too bad they didn't have little recorders like this machine here to take images of what that was. But it's so, it's so wonderful that that's what the king, Prataparudra, wanted to commemorate is hearing Srimad Bhagavatam in the assembly of the devotees from Gadadhar Pandit. A little detail, you see here the, the pink lower legs of Gopinath. That's, they're only seen like that during the month of Kartik. I was there the month of Kartik, and the legs were there. But at other, the other 11 months of the year, there's no legs because <coughs> Gopinath is actually sitting. Very unusual. And the reason he is sitting is Gadadhar Pandit was a temp contemporary of Nimai Pandit. They grew up together in Navadweep. Lord Chaitanya lived in this world for how many years? 48. 48. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left, Gadadhar was only 48. But he was feeling such pain of separation from Lord Chaitanya that he was unable to reach and place the crown, the turban, and the garland, and the other ornaments around the neck of Gopinath, so he sat down to make it easier. So Gopinath was very dear to Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar and vice versa. And Srimad Bhagavatam was very dear to them as well. Chaitanya Bhagavat says that when Lord Chaitanya came, he liked especially to hear the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prabhat Maharaj. And he would hear them from beginning to end. And when he got to the end, Lord Chaitanya said, Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. He wasn't part of this con. In this con, you say, I heard that one, I want to hear something. <laughs> because Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to be heard again and again in the assembly of nice Vaishnavas like all of you. It's compared sometimes to sandalwood. Some of you, I'm sure, have made sandalwood paste. And if you haven't, May you one day do that. Chandan Yatra is a wonderful time. Volunteer to come to the temple and make sandalwood paste for the Chandan Yatra, the festival. <coughs> Here's how you do it. You need three things. A piece of wood maybe as big as your fist. It's one thing. Sandalwood. A flat rock. And a little water. Not too much. 
not too little, just a little, a few drops. And a little circular motion, chanting Hare Krishna or your favorite verses of the Bhagavatam or sing songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Naratam Das Thakur and sing and make spiritual sound vibrations as you're doing like this. And you know what happens? The wood becomes paste. And the paste becomes very fragrant. And when you apply the paste, it's very cooling. That's Srimad Bhagavatam also. Take the topics and speak them again and again in the association of devotees and it's very fragrant and very cooling and soothing to the heart. So many of you have heard, I'm sure, more than once, many times, the, the pastime, the teachings and the prayers of Prabhupada Maharaj. But hearing again, and hearing again, and hearing again, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard from Gadadhar Pandit, that's our life. And by hearing again and again that the sweetness, the realization of the teachings, so the, the two main set, we said there's three main sections, pastimes, teachings, and prayers. And there, there's full symmetry between them. So I'm going to be speaking about just touching the beginning part of the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj and uh, following the same gift that our founder Acharya Sri the Prabhupada gave us, this Srimad Bhagavatam is such a gift. Maybe um, some of you will be inspired to go home and open Canto 7, Chapter 5 and start reading again and discussing with your family, with your children. Children love the Nishringa Dave story. They love the Nishringa prayers. It's one of the first things they learn. And then the Nishringa story, the prayers and the, the teachings. Here's Prahlad in Mayapur, covered by Chandan during Chandan Yatra. And I'm going to um, highlight just two sentences that come from the introductory section of chapter 6. So the teachings and the prayers span from chapter 5, most of the way through chapter 10. It's six and a half chapters. So Prabhupada writes, there's several parts, I'll read it slowly and then I'll break it apart and put it back together again. By accepting the lotus feet of Prahlad Maharaj, who is in the Parampara succession, <coughs> one will be able to understand the mode of spiritual life. In accepting this mode of activity, there is no need for material qualifications. Very simple. So we'll start with the first one, the first part. By accepting the lotus feet of Prahlad Maharaj. So, when reading this, I was pondering, asking, how do you associate and accept the lotus feet of Prahlad Maharaj? Because by time and space, it's far away. And if that's a prerequisite, it must be something you can do. So how do you, how do, you do it? And the answer is, you shrinvanti, gayanti, grinanti, sadhavaha. Those of you that have read carefully Prabhupada's preface, which is the introduction to Srimad Bhagavatam, every single volume quotes that verse, tad bhagavasargo janata agavit lavo, that the end is this, the method, the, the way of overcoming agha, or a life of sinfulness, the vitlava, the revolution in the impious lives of people in general, including ourselves, is by this process of hearing, 
Shunvanti, Chanti, Gayanti, and Grinanti. Not just parrot like, but Grinanti. It comes in. And once it's in, your life changes. It's transformation. It's not just information, it's life transforming. And when you take the, the teachings of Prahlad, we're going to be covering the first one of his teachings. And it goes in, and you live accordingly. That's accepting the lotus feet of Prahlad Maharaj. His lotus feet are not different than his teachings. His teachings are not different than his lotus feet. If you're at his lotus feet, you're absorbed in his instructions. If you're absorbed in his instructions, you've accepted his lotus feet. Because with his lotus feet comes the rest of it. His whole form and personality in So that's the first part. By accepting the lotus feet of Prahlad Maharaj. Second is who is in the Parampara succession. That means he had a teacher. And his teacher was Narada. It's right in his prayers. And he heard from Narada at a pretty early age. He wasn't even born yet. That's how he heard, that's when and how. He heard for a long time. He heard for 100 celestial years. That's a long Bhagavad class. Because when Harani Kashipu was off performing austerities, Kayadu, this is a long story, but Kayadu was entrusted, Kayadu is the name of the wife, of Rani Kashipu, who was pregnant. And she was entrusted to the care of Narada, and Narada was instructing her while Prahlad was in the womb, so he was instructing Prahlad. And the duration of... Kayadu asked the benediction of Narada. What's that? The benediction she wanted was that my child not be born until my husband returns from the forest doing his austerities. And Narada confirmed and gave two additional benedictions. Yes, your son will not be born. And he will never be harmed by anyone after he's born. And the third was he will defeat all a source. Of course, that meant his father. The story of Hajj, the, the, the best of the demons, the best of the Asuras. But that was Nara's benediction. So the whole time that she, Kayadu, was in Nara's ashram, was 100 celestial years, and she, he heard. And then, uh, so, he was in Parampara, succession. <coughs> then the third, which I underlined, it's not in Prabhupada's writing, it's mine. One will be able to understand the mode of spiritual life. Now what does that mean? Normally we might, we might say the mood, which is not so different, the mood of spiritual life, the mode of spiritual life. Because Bhakti is not just a feeling, it's a feeling. And Bhakti is not just a behavior, it's a behavior. But there's a mode, that's the essence of what Bhakti is. It's the love and devotion with which you offer whatever it is that you have to the source of where that something came from back to Krishna, with no mixture of anything else, just haitakiya pratiyata, without anything that's a motivation, and nothing can interrupt it. That's so, he's teaching the way of pure devotion. Later, this is chapter 6, introduction to the chapter. In chapter 10, 
Prahlad says in one of his prayers to Lord Srinidhi, seeing in this world a place that was so filled with ignorance and passion, you sent me. Meaning he's a Vaikuntavasi. You sent me to this world to teach the mode of spiritual life, to teach the way of pure devotion. That was his mission, and he fulfilled his mission. He was a pure devotee. He did it perfectly. So within his teachings is this mode of spiritual life. And in order to understand the mode of spiritual life, you have to take shelter of, accept the lotus feet of Prahlad. And by hearing again and hearing again and hearing again, that happens. The sound goes in. And the heart becomes cleansed. Jeto Just like the chanting of the Holy Name again and again, the hearing of Prahlad's teachings and prayers and pastimes again and again, the heart becomes cleansed. The mode of spiritual life becomes yours, accessible to you and that which is within your heart. And then the final point, and this appears in his prayers over and over, there's no material qualification needed, or say it negatively, there's no material disqualification that says this person or that person is not eligible because they don't have such and such qualification. There's, there's, you just have to be a spirit soul, as most of us. And there has to be a sincere desire. As according to Rupa Goswami, you have to want it. And generally, we have other kinds of wants, or at least we have a mix. I was speaking about that this morning. I call it the two pocket program. This is the Krishna pocket. This is the me pocket. Krishna, Krishna, me, me. Me, me, Krishna, Krishna. And we just have to get rid of one of those pockets. And just make one pocket. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, hey! Like that. So, that's our bhakti life, is the cultivation of that. But there's no... Supposing you have mixed desires, that's supposing. We all have mixed desires. It's not a material qualification. You can only start devotional service when there's no material desire. Or you have a high birth, or you have a good education, or you have lots of punya, and, and you're not sinful. And so, but jaga and ma, anyway, without details. There's, there's no material prerequisite. There's no disqualifier for devotional service. It would just be a spirit soul and be sincere. Get association and say yes. Say yes to Krishna. Very simple. So the prayer, the teachings of Prahlad begin with chapter 5. And what happened was after Prani Kashipu completed his austerities, Lord Brahma came and requested Prani Kashipu, what do you want? What benediction is it that you want? Well, he was, um, he wanted to be God. He was already ruling the kingdom of heaven and all heaven and earth and everything below. So he was thinking, gee, if I could just live forever, then I'm, I'm God. So he wanted immortality. So he requested Lord Brahma for immortality. He wouldn't have to die. And Lord Brahma said, well, I, I can't give you something I don't have. Even I'm not immortal, so ask for something else. So he was clever and he asked for something else. I can't die this way, that way, the other way, you know the story. So, Lord Brahma said, very well. 
So if Rani Kashipu finished his austerities thinking, I'm invincible. I can't die. And he went back to his kingdom. Kayadu was returned to the company of Rani Kashipu. And then that benediction of Narada was over, that the child could not be born, the child was born. And after some time, he went to school when he reached five years old. This is all taking place. Think of somebody you know, a little boy that's five years old. And uh, the, the school teachers were the sons of Shukracharya. Shukracharya is the chief priest of the demons. And his two sons were Shanta and Amarka. So he went to the local <coughs> Asura Kula. <laughs> Prabhupada established Guru Kula. And Rani Kashipu established a Asura Kula, a school to train up demons. And Shanda and Mark were the teachers. And Rani Kashipu, he was human. He had affection for his son. So, uh, you know, there was a limit to his affection. And so one day, after he was in school for some time, he placed his son affectionately on his lap and asked, My dear son, please let me know what you think is the best of all the subjects you have studied from your teachers. Now, he was thinking, Shanda and Amarka were his teachers. Prahlad was thinking, I'm not learning anything from Shanda and Amarka. I've learned from Narada. So he told him what he learned from Narada, because that's the, the best subject that he learned. Now, <clears throat> I've gone through this Let's try and think of a realistic number, not an inflated number. Maybe 25 times. And, you know, like sandalwood, you just, you just keep doing that. And not only the fragrance and the coolness comes, but, you know, the, the, there, there are many other things that start to happen when you get immersed in the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. And so, my appreciation of, of the construction of the teachings of Prahlad is that this next verse that I'm going to show you in just a moment is kind of like foundational. And from that foundational verse, there's, within it, there's some elements which we'll discuss. And then the other teachings expand on some part or another part of that foundational verse. There's several sections. There's teachings first to his father, then next to his teachers, then again to his father, then again to the students, and then again to his father. <clears throat> so he speaks according to his audience. The message doesn't change, but it's audience specific. For the, when he's speaking to his friends, his, the kids his age, it's two chapters. And he's, he's really clear, that, but they're a better audience. The teachers, <coughs> um, they're just supporters of Harani Kashiko. But, but listen to how he speaks to Harani Kashiko. He, he doesn't blink. He's very straightforward. He's fearless. He's a pure devotee of the personality of Godhead. So, those of you that know the verse or like to recite verses, let's recite it together. <laughs> and a satgraha. Um, 
I'm not a Sanskrit scholar by any means, but I've learned a few things from just hearing Prabhupada speak again and again. There are these two words, Dehi and Deha. Deha means the body, and Dehi is one, one who has a body, or the inhabitant of the Deha. And Dehi Nam is plural. So, nothing wrong with having a material body, we all have one. That's not the problem. The problem comes when this asat <coughs> grahat prevails. <coughs> so it's uh, griha is this, the same dot or the same root of like a grihasta and grihamedi or grahat is translated into word for word as the home and all the paraphernalia. So, in other words, I and mine. We find this language in chapter, in, in Canto 2, Aham and Mama, Aham Mama Ti. Material consciousness is made of these two things. Who I think I am and what I think is mine. In material consciousness, I think I am this body. Material consciousness. And if I am this body, then what's mine? This was produced from the body. It's mine. Like, gave this example the other day. Supposing I'm a carpenter. And I take wood and saw and hammer and nails and whatever else and I make a table because I made the table, it's mine. Don't ask me where to get the wood and the na nails and the ability. Don't ask me that question. I made the table, it's mine. And so now because it's the fruit of my work, because I'm the body, it's mine and I can use that to trade for some bags of grain or sell it in the marketplace and get some money and go buy some grain depending upon the, you know, the economy system. But proprietorship is it comes from my body. So the fruits of my work is mine. And I'm attached to the fruits of my work in material consciousness and all of the happiness that it represents because it represents from our time represents kama sense gratification that's really what the, the, the nectar the sense gratification so I'm driven by the mode of passion to do fruitive work to get sense gratification which is another mode of passion product but it ends up in frustration Kamesha, Krodesha, Rajo Guna Samudbhava. And that's a sat grahat. Absorption in mind, arising from the misconception of self. I am this body, and my happiness is in that which is mine. And Samudvigna Dhyam, again I'm not a Sanskrit scholar, but I've heard this. When I see this syllable, D-H-I, it means intelligence, like Bodhi, or Subodhi. D is intelligence, and Samudvigna is disturbed. My, my intelligence becomes filled with anxiety. Sada, always. So one who is absorbed in the bodily conception of life and finding happiness in that which is asat, temporary, impermanent, and I think it's mine, intelligence is filled with anxiety. This is the best thing. Now, some of you are familiar with um, 
Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, when Vidura, after going on pilgrimage and hearing from Maitreya, he comes back to Hastinapur to deliver his elder brother, Dhritarashtra. And after receiving Dhritarashtra, Yudhisthira and others, and hearing from him and so forth, he gets his elder brother in a private place and really lets him have it. And, he, you know, samodvigna diyam. He says some really strong things. <laughs> You're living like a dog. Living off the scraps of Bhima who killed your sons. And you think you're the king. Your teeth are falling out. Your liver is failing. The knock on the door is there. Death is at the threshold of your door. Get out. He's really heavy. And he gets, he gets it. Because he's right. Anyway. Samodvigna diyam is, is, is the opposite of Aikunta. Vaikuntha is no anxiety, and Kunta is anxiety. And so Samudvigna is filled with anxiety. It's the nature of material existence. It's unavoidable. One may try to utilize intelligence to arrange things such that there's happiness instead of distress, but it doesn't work out again and again. We keep doing it because we're like donkeys. We just keep doing it again and again. Prabhupada uses the phrase dog obstinate. I think it's donkey obstinate. It just won't move from that position of misery. Samudvigna diyam. This is his father, Asurabharya. Asurabharya, oh, best of the demons. People like you will, are, are filled with anxiety from identifying with the body and all the things that come from the body and all that is temporary. Then the third line, Ivadapatam griham anda kupam. Anda kupam means a, a, a dark well. They're searching for happiness and they find a place where there's no happiness. Like, the, the translation reads, like going into a well where there's no water but only misery. <clears throat> now, in America, we don't know so much about wells. Maybe some parts of Georgia, there's wells. But in India, there's wells are very common. And I'll just share something personal very quickly. Um, I was visiting a place where somebody, uh, somebody that had just finished getting his PhD, he, he worked for umpteen years to get that wonderful piece of paper, the degree from a very elevated un IIT university in Delhi. And he was getting ready for being posted in his professor position. And one evening, he went out to do an errand, and he didn't come back. And the next morning, he was found at the bottom of a blind well. A blind well means it's a water, well that no longer had water, so grass grew over, people didn't use it. He didn't see because it was dark. And he stepped on the grass, but it wasn't grass, it was the blind well, and he fell at the bottom of the well. The autopsy the next day showed that he broke his neck and he died. I'm sharing that with you. It's not easy even to say it. And when, when that happened, it was horrific. Such a, a fine person, etc., 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 etc. Phony. But this comparison, to me, it rings very strongly. On the coupon. There's no water in, in such a well. There's only misery. And there's no real happiness in such a life. There's only misery. 
And when intelligence is filled with anxiety because we know it's not right, but we keep doing it anyways. It's really unintelligent. We keep doing it anyways. Trying to do it a little differently, maybe. But doing, you know, puna, punash charvat, the charvana, I'm chewing the chew it again and again and again. Very, very foolish. And so the last line is, vanam gato yad harim ashrayeta. Just what Rani Kashipu, the king of the demons, wanted to hear. Go to the forest and take shelter of Hari. But Hari is his enemy, his avowed enemy. And his son is saying, take shelter of your avowed enemy. And go backwards. Because you're in this place, my, my dear father, What's the best thing you've learned? People like you, you you're, you're in a miserable condition where there's only suffering, there's no happiness, and you're taking shelter of the asat, the temporary, and thinking that you're this body. And there's no way out for a person like you. So, best to just leave it. It's exactly what Vidura said to Dhritarashtra, making that same reference again. Now there's higher things than just get out. Read carefully Prabhupada's purports there, and you'll see there, there are different stages of detachment from the temporary. But someone that's in a very low stage, as was Dhritarashtra, and certainly Hiranyakashipu, the best thing they can do is just get out. Not the Nara Uttama, not the Tamo stage of bhakti, but just leave behind that madness and misery and attachment. So within, I'll, I'll um, try to conclude. The teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam are the same as the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are the same as the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. They're one and the same. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't pull some philosophy out of the air and say, here's a nice philosophy. It's Srimad Bhagavatam. It's rooted and from derived from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's the essence of Srimad Bhagavatam. Vairagya Vidya Nitya Bhakti Yoga, as Sarva Bhattacharya wrote to describe Lord Chaitanya. Vairagya Vidya Nitya Bhakti Yoga. He taught Bhakti Yoga that's filled with knowledge and detachment. Lord Chaitanya taught in Prahlada's teaching knowledge and detachment. And the cure, the means of support for that miserable condition and coming again to knowledge and detachment is bhakti. Vairagya Vidya Nitya Bhakti Yoga. But Prahlad isn't mentioning specifically bhakti, but Harim Ashrayeta, take shelter of Hari. You serve him. <clears throat> and serving him means serving his devotees is serving him. For Prahlad, serving his devotees is serving Narada. He heard, he received everything from Narada. And part of his service to Narada is sharing what he learned to everybody according to their capacity. So he, he goes in much more detail with his friends. But here is just a foundational message. Here's the translation, Prabhupada's translation. Prahlad Maharaj replied, O best of the Asuras, king of the demons, as far as I have learned from my spiritual master, doesn't say Narada by name, any person who has accepted a temporary body and temporary household life is certainly embarrassed by anxiety because of having fallen in a dark well where there's no water but only suffering. 
one should give up this position and go to the forest, vana. More clearly, one should go to Vrindavana, where only Krishna consciousness is prevalent and should thus take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I think one of our members here in the audience is very soon going to be doing this, going to Vrindavana, taking shelter of Radha Shamasundra. So that's the beginning, and because of time we are not going to be able to go further. But needless to say, Randy Kashibu didn't want to hear what he heard. And his immediate thought went to where has Prahlad gotten this contamination, bhakti contamination, message of Vishnu Bhakti. Ah. This is first, you know, cut off this the supply of Krishna Bhakti. <clears throat> so but Prahlad is thinking the opposite. How how can I give Krishna Bhakti to this father of mine? It's is this he's a hard nut to crack. He's a very difficult person. <clears throat> I think at least he should just leave behind the situation, go to the forest, take shelter of Hari. From this instruction, you read on, I invite you, I encourage you, read on, and hear the other teachings that uh, he, he discusses because. Hiranyakashipu received, gave an instruction to Shanda and Namarka, watch out, there's some other boy that came in and polluted Prahlad and make sure he doesn't get further polluted. And so they attempt to do that and then they start asking him, where'd you get this? And then he starts teaching them. Another teaching, friend and enemy consciousness. So it, it keeps going, unfolding and unfolding and unfolding. You, you we get the panorama or a detailed slow motion picture of material consciousness from the teachers and Rani Kashipu. And then how to deal with those that are innocent, the, the, the friends. It's, it's very wonderful, very instructive. It's, it's heart moving and, and we learn the mode of spiritual activity from hearing Prahlad's teachings and his prayers. So if you want to go back to Godhead, he's a good person to spend time with. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj Ki <laughs> Any questions, comments, or discussion? Anything? Do we have time? Okay, yes. I just want to say it's special that we heard the voice of a righteous being in the world of That's special. As a lady, an unborn lady. Yeah. Therefore, a lesson for those of you that are in female bodies, some of us are never going to have the experience of giving birth to a child, but those of you that have that facility, you have a great opportunity to hear sound vibration, kirtan, recorded teachings, read aloud, you know, nice volume sound vibration because you're going to benefit another living entity besides yourself. Yes, Monique. You have a soft voice. We, he needs a microphone. We have no. Um, Maharaj, uh, I wanted to ask, like, when you were talking about the consciousness of mind. I'm going to repeat because there's people in the back. When I was speaking about the consciousness of 
mind, as in I and mind. Yeah? So, when, when we think we are uh, devotees. When we think that we're devotees. And when we're listening to these pastimes several times, we think, we know, I know already. So, what is the, what, what is the disease there? How, like, how is it related to that concept of mind and everything belongs to you? Well, it's your, your, your question is a little confusing, but let me try to respond as if it's not. <laughs> um, it's one thing to accept Krishna consciousness in the mind. I'll say it this way. I have this little saying. Many, many devotees join the Hare Krishna movement in their mind. And then something unfavorable comes and then they check out because they only joined in their mind. And so to, to, to become a devotee, it takes more than the mind saying yes. It has to go deeper. Which is not exactly what your question is, but it's related. So the go deeper means you hear and you hear and you hear. And it, Shrinvanti Gayanti, Drinanti, it goes in. It becomes what's your way of life. You're, you're, you're a, a, a genuinely, deeply held conviction. More than an idea, more than a value, it's who you are. And that takes time, it takes purification. So beware, going back to your question now, beware of the tendency, not exactly an I and mind consideration, it's a, it's a, but specifically, it's a material conception of who I think I am when that's not really what my conviction is. It's, it's chantala. The mind changes. It goes from this to that. We have to go, we have to, the mind has to join the Hare Krishna movement, but the heart also has to join the Hare Krishna movement, or be, become um, immersed in body. So the, the, the real test is when there's there are two, two things, passage of time and that bhakti is still vibrant. And another test is when there's some challenge and bhakti is still there, it doesn't disappear. <laughs> Otherwise, it's on the platform of mind. Now, it's not directly answering your question about the correlation between I and mind, because it's not exactly correlated. Okay? Anything else? And we're done. the key <laughs> so please pay attention when I call your name I'd like you to come up and perform the arati <clears throat> we have Varun and Shishira to so please come along with your family Trilokinath and Shantosh Kumari and then we also would like to have Shubhankar Nath and family to please come to perform the art.
Mankar Nath and Vijay Nath, please to come along with your family. So we'll also give you the garlands from the deities today. So Subhankar Nath and his family. Where's your wife? She's not wife. Okay, she's representing. Okay. So they're sponsoring the feast because they do this annual celebration in memory of his father, late Chandranath, Sunil Chandranath. And they're seeking the blessings of all the Vaishnavas and the prayers of all the devotees. And they do this annually without fail. You'll see them here. It's so nice that he considers this as his, as his spiritual family and he likes to do all his celebrations here. So if we could all please raise both our hands, we're going to pray to their lordships. Shri Shri Gaurdhintai Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra Devi and Shri Radha Madan Mohan for late Sunil Chandranath and also his current family, Subhankar Nath and Dvija Nath. And what is her name? Divija. Divija. Okay. Together. Hare! Today we also had another Trilokanath and Santosh Kumari. They are not here. So please make sure that you pray to their Lordships on their behalf. So I just wanted to make a brief announcement about this coming festivals. On March the 1st, we are doing Ekadasi. Very important fast uh, And then on March the 4th, which is a Monday, we started doing Shivaratri celebration. There is a Krishna conscious Shivaratri celebration. In Yoga Peet, if you go to Mayapur Dham, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur, he had installed Gopishwar Shiva. So before you enter into Mayapur, you are supposed to stop right there and get the blessings of Lord Shiva to enter into the Navadit Dham. So here, we'll have a Krishna conscious way of celebrating Shivaratri, where we'll all get to pray to Lord Shiva and sing Hare Krishna Kirtans, because Lord Shiva used to love doing Kirtans. And then we'll also have an Abhishek. So we're requesting devotees, if you would like to Make this your destination to chant the holy names, dance in ecstasy, have prasadam, and bathe Lord Shiva. He's considered to be one of the greatest devotees of Krishna, so we will celebrate it in that mood. The program will start at 6 p.m. with Abhishek, Kirtan, and then prasadam. And of course, understanding the position of Lord Shiva from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, On the 20th of March, it's a very important day for us. This is the new year for all Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We will be celebrating our new year because that is the day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had appeared. Gora Purnima Maha Mahutsava Ki There will be devotees in the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There will be approximately eight to 10,000 devotees celebrating the birth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And here in Atlanta, along with the temples and cities all over the world celebrating the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we will start our celebration at 6 p.m. We will have an Abhishek where everyone will get a chance to bathe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Shotashara Prabhu had a new theme he has this theme of Swarna Kamal, Swarna Padma or Swarna Kamal Abhishek, which is basically they have lotus flowers and they will put, because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the, his bodily complexion was that of molten gold. So the theme is that we will have lotus flowers and we will sprinkle 
gold dust on the lotus flowers and will give them to you and you will bring those flowers and offer it to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then you will get to bathe them with a beautiful golden kalash. So this is how this year's Gora Purnima festival theme. And so we have ordered for the lotus flowers. I have a feeling they're coming all the way from India. We don't know where they're coming from. All we know is that we have ordered for the lotus flowers. And we have, uh, the sponsorship is $101 to bathe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on his birthday with, with a golden lotus and a golden kalash. So we have 26 names so far. We have Adi Gadadha Prabhu, Kavisha, Bhakta Martin, Poonam Mataji, Shambi Hari Prabhu and family, Mahaguna Mataji, Vinod Sharma, Gora Chand, Shirley Roy, Vik Segal, Dhoni Mulchandani, Shiv Kumar and family, Vijay Yadav, Varshana, Nishikanta, Nakul Das, Sandeep Bharat, Sandeep Bharadwaj, Uttam Sarkar and family, Parampara Prabhu and Mitra Vindra Mataji, Sunil and Chandani, Uttam Aradhika, Om Shairam Das, Vrishabhana Prabhu, Sangeeta, Srinivas Tad, and Shritadev Prabhu. So we have 26 devotees, families, who want to participate in the Abhishek. Who, who also would like to participate? Vrajananda Krishna Prabhu. Let's give him a big Gauranga. We have to say Gauranga. Because the theme is golden. So Gaura means golden. So you have to say Gauranga. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's bodily complexion. So Vrajananda Krishna Prabhu, everyone, what do we say? Not very bold. For another day. So what else did we have? We have Amrit Bhai. What do we do for Amrit Bhai? I think Gauranga, you should chant as loud as you can. Because I'll tell you, when Advaita Acharya was praying for the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he was seeing all the suffering souls, and he was screaming so loud that the names of Krishna had penetrated all the planetary systems and it reached the year of Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. So how loud should we chant Gauranga? Thank you so much. And Amrita Jeevani Mataji. Let's give her a big go round. Anyone else? Yes, what name would you like? Sur Surabhi. Surabhi and family. Let's give them. Go!
We have a few more days. For those of you who would like to participate, yes, Mataji. Can you put her name as well? Prita Mataji. So give Prita Mataji a Goranga also. Anyone else before we sign up? Santosh Chaitanya Prabhu. Let's give Santosh Chaitanya Prabhu a Goranga. Anyone else before we sign up? Janti Bhai. Let's give Janti Bhai a Goranga. Anyone else? Okay, you want to sign off? Yes, what would you like to do? What is your name? Sriman, did you consult your mother? <laughs> do you have a piggy bank? Do you have a piggy bank? Okay, you can put his name down. Sriman. Let's put Goranga for Sriman. Okay. I just wanted to also announce that we have Ganga Mata Goswami, she just left. She sponsored the dress for Jagannath Baladev Shubhadra Devi. And Sandeep Bharadwaj and family sponsored the dress for Gorni Thai. All of the dresses are $1,001. Those dresses are made in Vrindavan by Brajvasis. And they don't use machines, they just use needles with their hands. So there's a lot of meditation. And they charge a thousand dollars. And then Radhika Balaji and Kavisha. They sponsor the dress for Radha Madan Mama. And then V Patel sponsored the Mahaprasadam from Gora Purnima. Gora Purnima Maha Mahutsav Ki Shiva Prabhupada Ki Nithai Gora Premani Please come and have the last darshan of the deities and Prashadam will be served outside.